I talk about heart disease a lot on this channel and that's mainly because by day I am a pharmacist, that's what I do for work. Every day that is what I deal with, I see people with chronic diseases, so things like high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, high cholesterol, just the whole suite of chronic diseases every day. The flip side, the other reason is because I have a pretty extensive family history of heart disease. I've seen a lot of family members go through it and experience it and have to live with it day to day. And I'm now getting older. Next year I'm 30. Family history starts to become a bit important when you start thinking about what your health is going to look like when you're older. Because the first thing you can do is look to your parents and see how their health is and that could be your future when you are their age because of family history. You could eat perfectly, you could exercise, you could have no stress, you could do everything right by scientific standards and you might still get type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, heart failure, a heart attack when you're older simply because of family history. And it's a scary thought but it's why I want everyone to know and be educated on these chronic diseases and know how to prevent them or if you do have them know how to change your lifestyle to make them better because yes family history that's the one thing that you cannot change it's an unmodifiable risk factor and there's a few of those it's family history it's age and it's biological sex you cannot change those things but that's only three things there is a whole list of things that you can change your diet your exercise your stress levels, the amount of alcohol you drink, whether you're a smoker. And these are the things that you should focus on to give yourself the best chance that you can as you get older with your health. And that's what I'm trying to do with the channel. It's just to give you the information that you need so that you can look at it and then make a decision for yourself because I'm not really here to tell you how to live your life. Now it's been over a year since I've done a video on high blood pressure, but today we're revisiting it because I just want to give you all everything you need to know so that you can start keeping an eye on it as soon as you can. In this video, I'm not going to touch too much on how to treat it or how to prevent it. It's just giving you the information on what it is so you can understand the condition because there's no point trying to fix things without understanding the condition, especially with high blood pressure because it is the silent killer. People don't really know they have it until things are quite wrong. So. Don't wait until you're 50 years old to find out that your blood pressure is sky high. Find out what your blood pressure is when you're young, or when you're younger, and then look after it while it's still okay. So before we do get into it though, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. high blood pressure. Blood pressure is essentially the force that keeps blood moving throughout your body. So inside your body is this huge system of, or this huge network of blood vessels. It's kind of like a transport system in your body because blood uses all these vessels to travel to the different organs, different cells, muscle, just everywhere in your body. That's what blood uses to travel there and of course your heart is the one responsible for pumping blood throughout this network of vessels. Blood pressure is important because it makes sure that your heart can push the blood all over the body. So if blood pressure is too low, then the blood isn't going to properly reach all the areas that it needs to and because blood has oxygen, it means that your organs aren't getting enough oxygen and that's why when your blood pressure is a bit too low you can feel things like dizziness, weakness, lightheadedness, your vision might even get blurry and that's simply because there is not enough pressure or force to push blood where it needs to go. The flip side is that if it gets too high, which is what we call high blood pressure or hypertension, then these blood vessel walls are experiencing too much force, which becomes a bit damaging to the actual walls of your arteries and your blood vessels. And it's also damaging for your heart because your heart has to work against this pressure to pump blood throughout your body. And it means your heart has to work harder, which is why over time you may get um, heart failure because the muscles in your heart are sort of 
overcompensating, they're working far too hard than they need to. So blood pressure is a balance between avoiding low blood pressure so that your heart can pump blood where it needs to go and avoiding high blood pressure so that you aren't damaging this intricate network of blood vessels and your heart and other organs, which we'll get to a bit later. So if a balance is so important, it can't be too low, it can't be too high, what is the number that we want this to be? What is the blood pressure that we want? And I've had to bring out the whiteboard because we need to talk about the numbers. So when you go and get your blood pressure checked, it will actually spit out some numbers at you. And this top number here, that is called your systolic blood pressure. And this is the pressure within the walls of your arteries at the time of your heart beating. The bottom number, that is called your diastolic blood pressure. And this is the pressure within the arteries when your heart is at rest. So if it's at rest, we are expecting that bottom number to be lower than the top number because that top number is when the heart is beating and pumping against the force. You would expect it to be higher. And so, when you do get your blood pressure checked, this is the number you want to see. 120 over 80 or a little less would be good too. But this is the ideal blood pressure and this is what a healthy blood pressure looks like. But what if it's higher than this? Well, blood pressure has a few ranges. And so, as I said before, if you are getting 120 or less, then that is ideal and pretty healthy for blood pressure. Now you'll notice the numbers that I'm talking about are just the systolic blood pressure, so just the top number. And that's because when it comes to diagnosing and looking at high blood pressure, the systolic blood pressure is the most important one to look at. So if your blood pressure reading is 120 to 139, then that is considered elevated. And at this stage, you're probably going to want to try and really modify your diet and the amount of exercise that you're doing, if you can, to try and bring it back down. This may not be a full diagnosis of high blood pressure just yet. This is the area that you can sort of turn things around. But if it's higher and it's 140 to 160, if you're consistently getting readings here, then your doctor may diagnose you with hypertension. You may get put on some medication to try and bring it back down to the more ideal level. And finally, if your blood pressure is 160 or above, this is the danger zone. This is where if you get readings that are consistently this high, you are putting your body at risk of more of the long-term damage that high blood pressure can cause. Because like I said, high blood pressure is a silent killer. You don't feel any symptoms of high blood pressure until things have gone quite wrong. And if your blood pressure is in this range, you are on the fast track to things going quite wrong. And if you're wondering what kind of long-term damage to your body I'm talking about, there are four main organs that high blood pressure can particularly cause damage to. The first I've mentioned before, it's your heart. And that is because your heart is the one that has to work to pump blood throughout your body. And if your blood pressure is consistently high, it has to work hard every single day. And that over time can age your heart much faster than it usually would. Your heart muscle becomes weak and damaged. And if this goes unchecked, then it can lead to heart failure or even a heart attack. The second is your brain. So within your brain is a lot of blood vessels, very small and they're very fragile and they are extremely important for your brain because your brain needs a lot of oxygen to perform its day-to-day -day functioning. If your blood pressure is too high though, those vessels inside your brain, they will get damaged and one thing that may happen is those vessels bursting, which would cause a stroke and a stroke can cause long-term brain damage, so that would affect your memory and your cognitive function. The third organ is your kidneys. Your kidneys have, again, very small blood vessels that supply blood to them, but they also have very small filters which are needed to filter and clean out your blood. That's their function. If your blood pressure is high, you can damage not only the blood vessels in the kidneys, but also these very, very small filters, which means that you can get kidney damage and eventually failure if, again, it goes unchecked for too long. Now, the fourth organ, is the eyes. Your eyes, again, have very, very small blood vessels and they are extremely fragile. So if you do have very high blood pressure, like I said, in that 160 or above range, the risk of damaging those blood vessels goes up. And if they get damaged, vision loss and blindness can occur. 
So those are the four main organs and those are the risks of having untreated or poorly managed hypertension. So even if you have high blood pressure, you're using medication or you're exercising and eating a blood pressure friendly diet, you can prevent this long-term damage from happening because medication and lifestyle changes together can keep that blood pressure down at the ideal level. So that's why we just need to make sure we are managing blood pressure. Okay, so we've talked through the numbers regarding blood pressure and what numbers we want to see, what numbers we maybe don't want to see. So I'm going to show you now how blood pressure is actually measured and checked. This is a blood pressure monitor and you can actually get these from pharmacies or online, I'm pretty sure. Um, but if you don't want to actually get one in your house, you can just, like I said, go to a pharmacy or go to your doctor and they'll probably use something similar to this to check your blood pressure. So this cuff will go around the upper arm and what you want to do when you are getting your blood pressure measured is keep your palm facing up and have both feet also firmly on the floor. I'm going to expose myself now and just check my own blood pressure as a demonstration. It's been about a couple of months since I got it checked. Last time I just did the measurement, it was at a reasonable level. It was in the healthy range, so if it's high now, we all know that YouTube is killing me. All right, here we go. So I've got the cuff firmly around my upper arm. Um, you can't see them, but my feet are flat on the ground. Now I'm probably talking a bit too much right now. Ideally you don't want to be talking when your blood pressure is getting measured and there's a few other things to keep in mind as well to make sure that you do get the most accurate measurement as possible. First is to avoid food, exercise and caffeine for 30 minutes, at least 30 minutes before checking your blood pressure. All three of these things can increase blood pressure and it means that if you get it checked um, very soon after, the reading might be a bit higher than it actually is. The next thing would be to also, if you do need to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom before getting your blood pressure checked. That's something else that can just increase it. And before you get your blood pressure checked, you'll probably be asked to just sit and wait for about five minutes just to relax and level out your blood pressure in case you are just stressing out a bit or you've worked yourself up. So I'm just going to press the start button and I won't be talking when this is doing its thing. Okay, and my blood pressure is 119 over 73 and I'm smiling because I was really stressing about that being higher. Um, it wouldn't have been a good look if I just keep preaching about how to prevent blood pressure and this is high. So that is a good number, that is a number I like to see. I am pretty happy with that, um, especially after I have been quite serious about getting my fitness up this year and it's been six months of me consistently doing that so it's good to see that that's keeping my blood pressure in check. So that's how you check your blood pressure. Now one thing a lot of people want to know is how does blood pressure actually get high and this isn't an easy question to answer. And there's a whole list of things that can cause high blood pressure. I'll put some examples here for you but the biggest thing I think is stress. Stress is a killer and it increases blood pressure. And some people are genetically more prone to stress and others are not. So this is something that is a very individual thing to navigate, but up there high on the list on how, how, how blood pressure gets high is stress. And you'll see other things on this list are of course, family history, um, a lifestyle that is lacking in exercise, a diet that is high in salt, in saturated fats, um, in added sugars and these fortunately are things that you can change alcohol smoking they all cause or can lead to high blood pressure I'll be addressing a lot more of these when I do a video focusing on 
what changes you can make. So that'll be focused on diet and, and exercise, but hopefully you can see on this list the things that you do have control of and you can focus and hone in on those. And the last thing that I do just want to touch on is symptoms of high blood pressure. I've said multiple times before that high blood pressure is a silent killer. Many people just don't know they have it until something's gone really wrong. And in the early stages, if you've just got a blood pressure that's elevated, that's even 140 or 160, you just may not know what's happening. So the best way is to just check your blood pressure. If you're ever experiencing symptoms like chest pain, shortness of breath, blurred vision, severe headaches, um, those are all things that really point into the direction of something potentially being wrong with your heart. Um, whether that's blood pressure or not, you just need to get it checked. Those are symptoms that we call red flags and it just means go to a doctor. So those are, the, those are the symptoms that high blood pressure can sort of manifest in when things are really going wrong and the damage has been done to your heart or your eyes. So we don't want to get to the stage of those symptoms being the reason that your blood pressure or high blood pressure is discovered. We want to catch it maybe when it's in the slightly elevated stage. That's the best place to catch high blood pressure and the only way to do that is to take the initiative and just go and get it checked. Don't wait. Don't wait till you're older. Don't wait till there's a problem. Just get it checked. So that brings me to the end of this video and I hope you've learned something about high blood pressure and I hope you understand now what it is and why we need to care about it. One in ten people have high blood pressure, which is a lot of people and it probably means if you're watching this you either are experiencing it for yourself or you know someone who is living with the condition. And high blood pressure, it leads to heart disease, which is the number one cause of death in Australia and in America and in probably the Western world, which is why I really like, I really want to focus on it. These are for the most part preventable conditions. Um, we just catch them too late. We have a health system that waits for things to go wrong. So it's up to individuals really to try and prevent and keep an eye on things while they're young or while they're still healthy to make sure that they stay that way. Of course, there are other conditions like type two diabetes, high cholesterol, I've talked about them on this channel before, but I will be going more deeper into these as well in due time. So just make sure you subscribe. I don't really have much else to say. So keep playing the long game and I will see you in the next video. I also just add that I have filmed an entire video and this dog is still sleeping. She hasn't moved.